What's going on, everybody? My name is Brian. You are watching Angling Anarchy. Welcome to the quarantine corner. <laughs> uh, we're in the midst of this whole COVID-19 thing that's going on right now. So what better to do than a little uh, boat project? Uh, we have Nate's boat here. What we're going to do is add to the back deck. Uh, we're going to put some storage back here, make the back deck bigger. We've got the vinyl and the carpeting over here. We've got our sheet of marine grade plywood our adhesive and assorted nuts, bolts, screws. So everything we need for this project, uh, we are going to start out by measuring twice, cutting once. Uh, that's important because the marine grade plywood is pretty expensive. Uh, from there, we'll get everything wrapped in the carpeting and the vinyl. And uh, the only thing we're missing right now is a piano hinge along the backside for the lids, uh, the drawers to open up. So. We still have to get that. Everything else we have, we're gonna get working on it uh, starting now. All right, well, phase one is done. I have my little handy, Dana, handy dandy, it's a uh sheet of paper here that we've written all of our calculations on. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind is when you take measurements to cut the marine grade plywood, you have to add a little bit on either side for the width of the either the carpeting or the vinyl. Uh, that's very important, otherwise, I mean, it'll fit together, but a little bit too tight. So you need to figure that into these calculations when you're doing them. Next step, we've got our pieces cut out. We're going to start wrapping vinyl around the pieces that are uh, supporting the lids. Uh, so we have the big piece here. I've got 3M super glue, uh, not super glue, multi-purpose adhesive. It's uh, contact glue. So we'll spray it on the piece of wood, we'll spray it on the vinyl, and we'll put some weight on it to get it to sit down. We're also gonna be using a stapler and yeah, we're going to get this piece wrapped up and get this one taken care of. Well, this project's being put on hold for a good old-fashioned Wisconsin fish fry. We'll be back. fish fry and I think we're actually going to kind of pack it up for the night. The last thing I did was I put uh, a little bit of the glue along the bottom edge of the big piece, stapled it down, and we're going to let that sit until tomorrow. So we will pick this up tomorrow morning. Well, uh, we're on day two of working on uh, Nate's boat, the extension on the back deck. And as we look around here, we've got stuff getting glued uh, to pieces of wood. We're working on the vinyl right now. This down here is the big long piece, and I'll kind of get in close here so you can see what we're doing on the corners. Um, you leave a couple little tabs and fold them in, and then this part is going to fold over like that, just so everything is covered up uh, between the staples that we use and the adhesive. Everything will go on there nice and tight. So we're going to continue working on this portion of it. All of these pieces have been glued down to the vinyl. And now what we're gonna do is on the bottom side, we're gonna flip up all these bottom sides, get a little glue on it, and then staple them down and start to wrap these up and get all of these little guys, the, these are the dividers, uh, get all these guys covered up with the vinyl.
completed. This is the big long piece that is going to make the kind of the front boat side or, or the cockpit side of, of this big uh, extra space back deck thing that we're building here. Um, but yeah, all nice and done, um, completely encased in vinyl, uh, everything stapled down. All the staples are either on the bottom side of the board or on the side where they're going to be hidden so you won't see them. Um, yeah, we've got one piece done. We've got a couple others in uh, various stages over here, so we're just going to keep doing this. Once we get the vinyl done, we'll work on the carpet for the tops. We're still waiting on the hinge to come. As soon as the hinge comes, we get the hinge on, and then we can start getting all of this put together and get this finished up. So that's the next step. All right, we just have a few of these pieces left to do in the vinyl. So what I'm going to do with these ones that are left, they're all just, it's the board and it's glued down to the vinyl. I'm going to make all the necessary cuts that you have to take out so that you can leave. There's little tabs that you have to leave so when you fold things it gets completely and utterly encased and then you have to do it in such a way that uh, you want all the staples to be on sides of the piece that aren't going to be showing. So really the only one, the only side that we don't want to put staples in is the top side because that'll be the side that's visible. But everything else is going to have staples in it to hold it together. So this is a piece that is it's just the vinyl, just the board. I'm going to go through and make all the little cuts and show you what it looks like after that. And then we can start wrapping these up and get these done and move on to the carpeting. Okay, kind of a weird angle, but uh, I made some the initial cuts that I need to make. So let's go over what all these cuts mean. We're going to start off by gluing this bottom part down here. And these tabs on the side are also going to glued to the side, as well as these tabs on the top here. We'll glue those down to the side as well. After these tabs all get glued down, now this corner is a little funky because of the angle, but you'll be able to kind of see what's going on. Once we get these tabs on the side, we can then get the sides glued and stapled, and that's going to hold everything in place. And then we're able to flip it over, glue it to the other side of the board, and then no more tabs. All we have to do is, and once we get to that point, I'll try to show what, what's going on there, but then we'll just flip the edges over, staple them down again, and then it's completely and entirely encased. <laughs> oh, this is a strange angle to be on, but anywho, so, all the sides and tabs are glued down. They are stapled down. So we just want to go through and run the edge of the knife along all of these sides that are sticking up and make this nice and clean. Next step is to flip this over, get this and this uh, filled up with glue, put a little weight on it, and then the last step is to do this with this sheet, just with all the tabs. So we'll kind of cut out the corners and then we'll just have flaps like this that get glued down this way stapled in and then cut off on the other side you have to be more careful because like i said this this time around we can run that knife edge along the wood and if you dig into the wood a little bit no big deal the other side you have to be really careful because now you're running the knife edge along the finished product and you don't want to go cutting in to our nicely glued down vinyl on the other side so that's the next step. As you can see behind me, we are nearly finished with this piece. We have all the other side done, all the tabs and all that stuff cut and stapled into place on the sides here. The only thing we had left to do was prep this side to get flipped over and glued to this side. And I'm going to try to flip this over one-handed because I'm holding the camera. Boop. If you can see, Boy, that's a weird shot. I've got all these little corners cut out, ready for these to get flipped up and glued. Now the way I did that is you just take a big old T-square. It's probably hard to see, but you just put it on these corners and cut, cut. That leaves this free to be glued up here. Oop, that leaves this free to be glued up here. Glued up here. And of course, all the other sides glued, stapled, and then this is done. 
only a couple few more to go. We've got a couple done already. Uh, this one, two others, then all the vinyl stuff is done. All we have left is the carpeting, and that shouldn't take too long. We have our hinge. We've got latch, nice locking latches for the doors. Everything's in place. We just have to finish up covering the pieces of wood, and then hopefully very soon here we will get to assembly. That's the exciting part, and uh, see if I screwed this up or not, and uh, make sure everything's fit. We'll see. On to the carpet. We have all of our vinyl pieces done. So the only pieces that we're putting carpeting on are the two lids that we're going to be putting on the hinges. Um, so what I did was I cut, the, the carpet was just wide enough so that if I cut it down the middle, I had two pieces that give me about three inches of extra material. That's what we're going to wrap over and staple to the inside of the carpet. One thing to pay attention to is keep the grain of the carpet going in the same direction. Mark it on the back here. I think I put an arrow pointing in a direction so that when I lay these pieces of carpeting down, I know which direction the grain of the carpeting is so that when you put it in the boat, it doesn't look weird. It, it should match up pretty nicely. The other thing I did with the boards is if you have a router and you can take off the harsh edge that you'll be that will kind of be out into the cockpit of the boat, that's what's going to wear out first. So if you can round those edges, that will help uh, the edges from wearing, the carpet wearing through. Um, what else? And the other thing to pay attention to is the board has a very slight curve. It's crowned a little bit. I want to put that so that I don't want it upside down so that the edges are flayed up when it's laying flat. If it's got a little crown to it, it's not the worst thing because then when you lock it down and the, the just the gravity is going to let it sit nice and flat. So pay attention to that as well. So I labeled the tops uh, so I know that that needs to go down. So yeah, we're all set. I'm going to get these centered on here, trace around it with the Sharpie. That way I know where to put my glue and we're going to get these glued down and that's the next step. Ah, whoa, almost fell over. All right, I skipped ahead a little bit. Here is the semi-finished product. Now, I say semi-finished because we still need to put the latch on here. So I'm going to wait to do that until we can get everything set in the boat because I want that measurement to be very accurate because of the way we have to put the locking mechanism on the bottom and actually have it catch something inside the storage. But yeah, this is the finished lid. We've got our hinge on there. So how did we get from that to this? That's what we're going to do now. The nice part about doing that one first and waiting on this one to show you guys how I did it is I took my time and really I had to think about the cuts and angles that I wanted to use so that we can get everything wrapped nice and neat and not have any bulges anywhere. And so I'm going to try and mark out where I make the cuts. We'll kind of go through that, then we'll actually make the cuts and try to get this thing all wrapped up as nicely as that one is. I've taken the time to mark all the corners and all the cuts that we're going to need to make. Um, this comes in handy as well as one of these. So this piece right here is going to end up laying right here when we fold this up. Where I've got the X's, that's what we're cutting away. So that when this is folded up, it's kind of at an angle like this. When this folds down, it is at the corresponding angle, so you have a nice corner right here. So we need to cut this piece out and cut this piece out. And the way I made the, you know, the this right here, you just measure there, and then you measure out 5 eighths. That gives you your little tab. Wow, this is a lot easier when it's on the ground. 
this angle right here is on a 45 and then actually you can just use this line and draw straight across that's how I got all this hopefully that makes sense I'll cut it all out and there's a little trick this little tab here there's something we're gonna do so that when it lays down it lays nice and flat and doesn't make a bump when we get everything wrapped up so let's do that now so we've made the appropriate cuts so that this let's see the front and the back are going to just have these flaps flipped over that's where this tab comes in and now see how thick that is when we lay this tab when this gets flipped up and that tab gets laid down that's going to go over it and this will will get this tighter so it meets up here but that's what we're doing I want to get this so that the carpeting is not as thick so what I'm going to use one second this little trick just use this and you can skim down some of that carpeting that's on here so it lays a little bit flatter so let's do all of that stuff now just so you can see the difference after we use the little beard trimmer if you can kind of see how thick the carpeting is and how we've got this kind of thinned down so we want to have the integrity of the carpet I mean still be nice and strong so that when we push this up glue it down we can put a little pressure so that this corner is nice and covered but we just don't want it to be real fluffy for when we put this part over I'm going to do the other three tabs and then we can start gluing stapling this down get the hinge on and we're almost getting there we're probably oh gosh I mean this is the last of the prep work after all this happens we get to put it in the boat that's going to be the cool part. Just so you can see real quick, we've got the two long sides done. And that's what it looks like. We've got the tabs on either side. So all we need to do now Flip that up, staple that all down, and we've got our lid completely covered and ready to go for the next step, which will be the hinge. Now that we have our second lid done, all done, all nice, everything's stapled down, everything looks good, we need to get a hinge on this bad boy. Um, this is what I'm using as the front side, and I don't think I mentioned it before, but I used a belt sander to kind of smooth this edge down. In fact, I did it to all the edges, but I really tried to round this front edge because this is gonna be the part, like the cockpit will be here. The hinge is gonna go on this side, so I wanted this piece to be rounded off as much as possible so you have less chance of, you know, over time the carpet wearing through on that sharp, harsh edge. I forgot to mention that earlier, the, the belt sander part, so yeah. If there's a, or a belt sander or a best case scenario would be a router. If you had a router and really round this off, but belt sander worked for me. So let's get the hinge on this. All right, so with the help of a couple clamps, we've got some good pressure pushing it into the carpeting and into the backside. So that way I know when I drill my holes into the bottom here to connect this to the wood, um, I wanna make sure this is pushed in as, as far as we can go so we can grab as much of the wood as we can. And on the back side here, let's see if we can flip this around. I want, I'm gonna measure just a little bit more than halfway down this bent edge here. And that's where we're gonna put um, about two inches in from each side a bolt and nylock nut one right in the middle and then equidistant between those two so we're going to have five bolts across the length of this holding this on it's going to be about every eight inches or so give or take so that's what we'll do next we'll drill in get the bolts to hold our hinge on 
And I think after that we can start looking at getting this sort of knocked up. We gotta get the boat back in here. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll have the boat. So the next thing you see will be us putting this all together in the boat and hopefully getting things screwed down in place and actually installing this new back deck with storage extension. Can't wait. All right, real quick, I said we were gonna put this together next, but I just I wanted to go over a couple things. The hinges I have put on with, these are 10 by 24 screws. They're an inch and a quarter long. There is a little bit that sticks out. If that causes us a problem, when we put this together, we can always take a hacksaw and get rid of these little nubs, but I've done this project before in my boat and they don't seem to be a problem. Um, one other thing to consider is where your cross braces are going to be. These are exceptionally wide drawers or lids. On my boat, I had, they're, they're probably a good eight to 10 inches less wide than these are. So I wasn't worried about the span of it. These are 34 and a half inches. So if we put something right in the middle or just off center, hopefully we'll have enough sturdiness there to have about 16, you know, you'd, you'd like to have 16 on center at least. Um, so I put this in the middle knowing that I think we're gonna have one of our cross braces just off center. And that way too, we might have our locking mechanism, our little latch, just off center as well. So th things to consider when you're putting this all together. Uh, I know all too well about getting too far along into a project and then realizing you've put something in the wrong place. So you have to think ahead a little bit. But yeah, we've got uh, the hinges all set and I'm excited to get this thing put together and see how it looks. Well, we have the boat. We've got our pieces over here. We've got the lids over there. We're gonna start getting this thing put together. A couple things to address first is this little deal. That little box drops down. It was for made for a cooler to sit in there. We're gonna remove that and have that as kind of a little open space, maybe a good place to put planter boards. Maybe we'll even put some hanging bait storage there. On the other side of things, the only thing I'm concerned about is this right here is not wood, it is metal. And we've got a live well on the other side. There's enough space between the metal and the live well that we should just be able to run sheet metal screws, but we might try this. I might try to see if I can pull the bolts out, drop the live well so we can get at that. I would much rather have this, this edge here where the hinge is gonna be bolted in but if we have to use metal screws, we'll do that too. So that's the plan. Let's get at it. We have made some progress here um, since I last talked to you. Last I talked to you, we had the hinge on the lid, and now we actually have the lid on the boat. Uh, a couple of the other things we did in the meantime, all of our cross braces on the bottom side here We've got three quarter inch angled aluminum so that it can be screwed to the floor. And then we've got pieces up front here and they're just held on by those uh, 10, 24 screws. I think I've got inch and a quarter on, on these, inch and a quarter long with nylock nuts. That's what holds this all together and that's what's gonna hold this in, in place and give it stability in here. And that's where we're at. So we are very close having this project finally done. Um, the back side here on the hinge, I just used sheet metal screws, they're number 10 sheet metal screws, uh, because we, we had to be careful because we had a live well on the other side, but we had about an inch of forgiveness on the other side, so a three quarter inch sheet metal screw is holding those on right now. We'll get a couple more on that hinge, but we were just kind of excited to get this door on and keep proceeding with the rest of this. We're moving along pretty good right here. We're taking our pieces of angled aluminum. It's 1 16th inch by 3 quarter inch, uh, 90 degree angled aluminum. And that's what we're using on our cross braces. This is what we're using to connect everything together. So what I'm doing is on the bottom of our long pieces, they're 12 inch pieces of the angled aluminum. 
on the front side where our big front, our long front piece is going to connect. I've got 8 inch pieces that are going to go there. And on the back side, there's enough support between this and this that on the back side, I'm really not worried about connecting the back to anything. Um, that's what I did when I did my boat project and it seems to work out just fine. So just less pieces, less holes in the boat um, and it's still very structurally sound. So what I'll do is I've just been clamping, clamping these together and then drilling my holes. That way I know my holes on either side are exactly where they need to be. And then we can, the way you can get these on here is put this where it needs to be on the ground, if you can kind of see that. So it's just flat on the ground. Um, mark where the holes are, then you can drill the holes. That way you know that the edge of this is flush with the edge of your board and everything's going to line up right. We're trying to get the spacing for all these pieces. Uh, what we're going to do on the far ends of this is hanging storage using, these are like two and a half inch PVC gutter pieces. So we've got these cut so they're just a touch shorter than our cross braces here. And we're going to go six across. That will give us, it's just a touch over 15 inches. So from here to here is about 16. From here to here is also about 16. So we have our weight distributed over that board evenly enough that we don't have a saggy spot or anything like that. So yeah, now that we've got our spacing, we can start getting these pieces locked down into the floor. And then we'll need to put this on the front and we're getting there. We're almost done. <laughs> All right. We are getting very close to the end uh, of this little project here. Um, as you can see, we've got all of our cross members screwed into the floor. Um, over here on the side, we sort of had to build since there wasn't a solid side like there is on the other side. We had to build kind of this little two-tiered, if you can see that. The drawer's going to rest here, and then this is just going to put a little pressure on it to keep the drawers from shifting. Not that they're going to shift side to side that much, but it just gives it a little bit more structural integrity. Um, the hinges are on, the doors are on, we are just a couple steps away from being done. We just have to get our big piece screwed onto all these. And then the last thing is to make some very fine measurements and figure out where we need to put our latches on the lids. These little guys right here, Percos, they're nice ones, they're lockable. So this is gonna look, in fact, it's, it's gonna match the rest of the boat. This should look like this came out of the factory this way. And all right, let's finish it up. All right, we've gotten a lot of work done here. Everything is secure. So if you can see kind of inside, we'll go around the corner here. All the corners, anywhere we can put a bolt through, that's what we did. So the bottom pieces that come up the sides of any of the cross members, we ran 10 by 24 stainless steel bolts through with nylock nuts on them. Anything that goes into wood where we don't want, like on the, oops, on the outside edge of this. Anything that's screwed into this, we just use a three quarter inch um, because with the five eighths wood, a little bit of aluminum, it's just enough to keep a three quarter inch screw from going all the way through it. So everything, every corner is screwed down. We've got both of our lids. Uh, we just use a two and a half inch hole saw to cut the holes for those. I uh, just had to remove a little bit of the carpet to make room for them. I didn't film a lot of this stuff because it's not terribly exciting and there's just no good way to do it. And this would be 50 minutes probably. Um, but I'm trying to keep, uh, who knows, I'm not sure what this is going to be by the time I edit it. But um, And then on the inside here, if you can see, we just put a little piece of the aluminum to catch this so that when we put it down, turn it, lock it, nice and secure. So uh, the only thing that really that we have left is we're gonna cut a bunch of two and a half inch downspout, uh, PVC downspouts. Uh, we're doing six by seven, so we're gonna have 42 and 42. So we're gonna have storage for 84 baits in here, plus the two middle ones for rain gear, 3,700 boxes, whatever. Um, yeah, this is a 70 inch by 
I think we came out about 20 inches. So this adds a significant, I mean, it makes the back deck almost twice as big. I mean, this is a really significant addition to the back deck, a ton of storage. And we very rarely, you know, we're covering up the two, there's two pedestal posts back here that we could use uh, for seats, I mean. But, you know, very rarely do we have more than two people in the boat anyhow. So we're not really losing anything. And really, uh, if you've got a third person on the boat, they can just grab a boat cushion and sit on the back here. So yeah, we're gonna cut some more of the PVC and uh, we're pretty much done. So I'll be coming back probably one more time with that, the absolute finished product finally, and we'll wrap this thing up. finally finally done um, this thing is solid probably more solid than the rest of the boat um, yeah this is this is great storage if we open it up we have 42 spots for hanging musky baits over here another 42 on this side uh, these lock they're nice and sturdy um, that's that's about it guys uh, if you have any questions uh, I tried to document as much of the stuff as we did, but if you have questions on, on any of these things, please don't hesitate to ask me in the comments below. Um, yeah, it's a cool project. It's, it's really easy to do. It just takes a little bit of time. Uh, you know, definitely take your time. Measure a bunch of times because I, even I have done this before. I get excited about stuff. I want to just start cutting and throwing things together. Really take your time and figure out what you're doing. And that is it. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, all that jazz, and I will see you on the next video.